Well, good evening. Welcome to Azusa. Are we are so glad you're here. Are you glad you're here? Are you ready to receive a powerful word from the Lord tonight? Are you ready to worship him with all your heart, worship your guts out? Okay, stand to your feet then. Stand to your feet, and we are going to invite the presence of the king in the house by blowing the shofar. Principalities and powers that he is welcome in this place. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign as we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life, as we are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is here. i 
Just stand in this for a minute. Just, just bless him. Oh, you are so welcome here, God. We praise you, Lord. Come on, he's enthroned on the praises of his people. Every other thing that we could bring, depression, anxiety, those are inferior thrones. He can only rest on praise. Come on, let's paint the atmosphere with our adoration right now. Yeah, yeah, come on, use your outside voice. Beautiful King, beautiful King. Beautiful King, beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Powerful, 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 powerful. <laughs> glorious, 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 glorious. Sera nama seriki, sariama sarama kasei. Come on, we're, we're probably going to go into some declarative warfare later on, but we will do warfare from a place of presence. Come on, calibrate your spirit. This is where we do battle from. Se ramama se karamama se. Come on, you can go there, you can go there. This is really what we came to do.
darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Your name 
says we win. The word 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 says we win. spirits like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I Spirit, what would you like now? There's just already such an unusual presence available. taking a walk in the tall grass. No one's ever been where we're going. Because you're a pioneer. You have permission to go where you've never gone before.
What's holding me back is I keep seeing an image of somebody in your mind is in a vice and it's demonic. You've been told that you have mental illness, it runs in your family, it's just gonna be your lot. In Jesus' name, break off now. We come into agreement with heaven and we come into disagreement with the lies of the enemy. All right, now we can move. We've seen what you can do, God of wonder. Power has no end. <laughs> the things you've done before, but now in greater measure. Yeah, you'll do again through us. There is no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. In the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up. say this first. Let me say this first. Stop. Just stop. Stop. I'm not your normal worship leader, okay? I'm very unorthodox, but it's okay. So I want to explain to you how this song works. We started out reflecting on what he's, what he's done, what he's able to do, reminding ourselves there's no place that he can't break into. He brings his own door, all right? Now, this last part, this bridge that we're about to sing, this is where we go from reflecting and meditation and, and even some praise to this is, a, this is a prophetic intercessory declaration that we get to partner with heaven in, okay? So I don't want you to just sing it. This needs to come out of a deep place, okay? Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour.
All afternoon, I've been feeling like tonight would be a significant time for us to press into some things in intercession. If, uh, and I know uh, most of us in here at some level are either fathered by or mentored by Dutch. And uh, I never really had a real interest in any kind of digging into Greek words and different things until I sat under Dutch at Christ for the Nations. And the very first Greek word I ever learned, there's two phrases that I know of when I think of Dutch sheets. The first phrase is the first word I learned, paga. And it's not just paga, it's how you say it. It's an intercessory word. This man taught me that sometimes when you go into prayer, you gotta go in with paga, you gotta go in with violence. The kingdom of God suffers violence. If the violent do what? That's that song. You make the darkness tremble. And tonight we're gonna make darkness tremble in this house. This is not just a feel good gathering. I'm happy that you do, but that's not what this is. This is a ecclesia. This is a, a gathering. This is a, a governmental time where we stand and say, we're casting a vote, but we're not only casting the vote, we are the enforcers of that. You understand? And so tonight we're gonna make the darkness tremble. There's three specific areas that, uh, oh, I forgot. The, um, the other phrase that comes to mind when anybody says Dutch's name, one is Pana. And the other is this, America shall be saved. My God. You see, what you have to know, he goes all over the country in times like this. This is not new for him, but it ain't new for us either. This is our night. This is our time in this part of the country to come together and say, we, we, we are a part of this movement. We, we will not be counted out. And we have a role to play in this. We are this ecclesia of this central part of America. And we will rise up and we will do our part. Come on, amen. We will go into the heavenlies and we will see verdicts issued tonight in Jesus' name. The Bible says that when the righteous rule, the people what? Rejoice. And so tonight we have the privilege of praying over three specific candidates and then I wanna pray over a couple of specific things and I've asked the coalition and Greg's gonna come up here in just a moment and, and Kenny Price is gonna come up. And we're gonna pray over some very specific things tonight. And I don't want you to be a spectator in this. Come on. We need every member of Congress here tonight. We need every member of Ecclesia here tonight. And we need you to engage. We need you to activate some things and move some things in the realm. Come on, amen. We're gonna see that split. We're gonna see that dividing that we talked about this afternoon. Going right through that second heaven and releasing the glory of the third heaven in this place. And so we have three candidates that I want to pray over, and I'm going to ask them to come down here. And Dutch, if you and Greg don't mind, I'm just going to ask you just to lay hands on them. And Greg, I might even hand you the microphone because you're probably going to end up prophesying of them. Uh, could you, uh, Russ, could you move this table out of the way? 
So would you come, uh, Jim McLean is running. Come right down here in the front so Dutch and Greg can lay hands on you. Jim McLean is running for state representative in the state of Iowa. Y'all welcome him. <laughs> David Pouch. David is running for United States Congress representing Iowa. And his wife, Peggy. Jim, is your wife with you by chance? Is your wife with you? Have her come on down. And then my, uh, I'm so proud of this, my very own son-in-law, Pastor Josue Rodriguez. And his wife, the only reason he's my son-in-law is because he married my daughter. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> I told her when she was just a little girl, I said, I don't know who you're going to marry, but I can tell you already, I don't like him. And the truth of the matter is, I don't like him. I love him. I almost want to cry right now because there's a governmental mandate on this house. You got to know that. Has been for a while. We've unlocked some things. And I got to tell you, Luana, you come on down. She's a current state representative for Iowa. No, no, no. We're not praying over you. You get over here. You're, you're praying over them. You've already won. Tell you why, I'm, I'm very proud of, 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 of what is happening here tonight because we need these men and women. We need them to serve. Anybody else running that we need to pray over you? Anybody, any other, anybody that's already elected and you can lay hands on them? Anybody? All right. So let's, if you guys just kind of huddle right here, come and move, Jim, move on down just a little bit if you would. You guys come on down. We're going to ask Dutch and Greg and Luana to lay hands upon you. And would you stretch your hands out towards them? And we're just going to step into this realm. Father, in Jesus' name, and then Greg, I'm going to hand the mic off to you and then whatever you guys have. As we lay our hands upon these candidates tonight, in Jesus' name. First of all, Father, come on, I can't even hear you guys praying. Stir it up in this house. The ecclesia, you're voting by your prayer right now. You're voting. We lay hands upon them in Jesus' name. We release the favor, the favor of God upon them. We thank you for opening doors. We thank you, Father God, for provision for them in Jesus' name. We thank you supernaturally, God, for going ahead of them. We thank you, Father God, for being to them all that they need. We bind every lie and every work of darkness that has come against them in Jesus' name. We thank you that the vision is, runs hot inside of them. Thank you, Father God, for opening up doors for them, going ahead of them, God, and making a way in Jesus' name. Come on, just begin to pray in the spirit over them right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we release your word over these candidates tonight. Father, they are pioneers, and we release that pioneer spirit to begin to stir within them, Father, and begin to open doors for them. Father, we release over them and decree over them tonight that you are giving them laborers for their harvest. Lord, they need, they need people standing with them, walking with them, serving with them. So we call those laborers in, Father. We release over them tonight supernatural resources, everything financially, everything that they need. Uh, Lord, to cause this campaign to be seen and to be heard. Father, we also decree and release over them and through them, Lord God, open doors and favor. Father, you're going to start causing people to hear them that normally wouldn't hear them and to like them that normally wouldn't like them. Father, we decree over them tonight that the open doors of the hearts of the people that would be their constituents would fling open wide, Lord God, and they would begin to receive these into their hearts, catching their vision, catching what, dear God, they are sharing with their, with their districts, Lord. And we thank you, Father, these open doors will result in favor, and the favor will result in votes. And we also decree over them tonight that there will be lasting fruit, that you will give them the ability 
to pass laws, to make laws, Father, in a way that will last many, many, many generations after them. Father, that will be righteous fruit, much fruit, fruit that would cause the state and the nation to begin to shift into its prophetic assignment. So we decree tonight, Father, that you are bringing about a whirlwind of support and a whirlwind of exposure for them in this assignment. And we decree over them that they are a vital part of Iowa and Illinois being saved and America being saved in Jesus' mighty name. Favor. Come on, family, just begin to pray into the favor. Favor, favor. We release favor for them, Lord God. Hearts opened, hearts opened for them, Lord. Favor. Father, give David favor on a national level. Begin to cause those in seats of authority, those that have the influence to move the hearts of the people to begin to put their stamp of approval upon this man. I just see in the spirit eyes turning from things that they've been focused on and beginning to look at you. And the Lord I feel in my spirit is saying to you tonight that he is giving you a window of favor. But this window that he's giving you is going to require you to push through it in a way that may seem like labor. But Lord, tonight you're giving him wisdom you're giving him revelation. Your Father, you are giving him the strength and the courage that he needs. And Father, I just see you pulling him from amongst the others and causing him to stand out in the crowd. And so, Father, we release that over David tonight. We release that over him tonight. And I decree over him tonight that things are shifting and moving and momentum is being caught and you are shifting and moving him, Father, in a place of being seen, in a place of being now recognized, uh, and a place of trust in this region in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, I release over Jim tonight. I hear the Lord saying over you, Jim, it's your mouth that gets you in trouble, but it's your mouth that causes you to stand out. And the Lord says, don't hold back, don't pull back, don't allow the political spirit to, to begin to try to steward you, but to be the bull in the china shop that you need to be for the people to be able to say, that's the one that can't be broke. That's the one that cannot be saddled. That's the one that will not be able to be tamed. He'll be the wild horse in the midst of those that are used to the corral. So Lord, we release that over him tonight and we just decree over Jim tonight, God, that you are bringing him into a place. His voice is going to be heard in a very great way. And Lord, over all sway, we decree over this man tonight. For such a time as this, what started out as a good idea has now been revealed to be a God idea. And the Lord says, I'm releasing great favor over you. But I'll bring you into the fullness of this step by step line upon line I'm released favor upon your life and you're talked about in the back rooms already and so the Lord said I'll take care of the back room you go take care of the people and so Lord as the generations the younger ones begin to see hey we have a voice I thank you father tonight that they'll begin to rally around this young man and we ask for victory we ask for victory. We ask for victory. We ask for victory. As David went out against the giant, Lord, he, he had practice in the back room, in the back side of the desert. But Lord, he went out in the big fight and he won right off the bat. So we're asking God for victory tonight. 
And the Lord said, you're going to have to keep your ear to his breast. There's going to be a tendency to run this way and to run that way. But God said, let me control the throttle. And as I control the throttle, the throttle, I will begin to release within you words that will be beyond your years. But you have to let your ears hear the words beyond your years. Bless him in this endeavor to be a voice of righteousness in the halls of government in Jesus name yes father I just bless I bless these candidates these ambassadors and I thank you Lord for grace to establish your kingdom I just hear the Lord saying I'm going to cause a wind to blow before you to blow back the sands to blow back the things that are shifting and unstable and cause you to see the rock, to cause you to see the place that will uh, uh, establish my kingdom, that will support my kingdom. The Lord said, I'm giving you eyes to see and ears to hear and heart to understand how to establish my kingdom. The Lord said that heaven will come to the earth even as you see what I'm doing and as you cooperate with heaven, you will cause my kingdom to be established in new ways new ways in new ways and it won't be a shifting shaking thing but it'll be established thing that which is eternal and that which can be counted on and a shade that can be entered into and comfort and rest and peace for the land says the Lord you're going to be peacemakers carriers of my peace and carriers of my authority and carriers of my kingdom that will establish the kingdom and make a place a blessing and abundance and the blessings of heaven will run freely through the land under your guard and under your watch says the Lord run run swiftly with the grace of the Lord know that my hand is upon you and that my wind goes before you clears the pathway and blows away that which is shaky and unstable and causes you to see the rock that will that will cause my kingdom to be firmly established Hallelujah. in the places of your responsibility and your authority. Hallelujah. So I bless you tonight Come in on. Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. God, Just recently Lord, here in our area, Quad Cities, I had two different pastors tell me that they, and they said this, we don't deal with anything political from our platform. That tells me two things. And this is a challenge to those of you that are pastoring around the Midwest and, and are here for this conference. That tells me two things when I hear that. Number one, you don't understand the assignment. Amen. Number two, you're not carrying the mandate. Amen. What it tells me is basically, we can't count on you. Wow. So that means that we have to dig in and we're gonna do our part. But here's what I tell them, and I learned it from this little lady. Neither do we deal with politics up here. We're not about politics at all. We deal with government. She told me, you're probably tired of me quoting you. She told me, politics is to government what religion is to Christianity. It's a perversion. Come on, let's thank the Lord for these candidates. You guys can be seated. I want to, and don't give up on me, worship team, don't give up on me. I want to, uh, my, my heart is broken over the bloodthirsty leaders that we have at a national level. And I believe that, I'm gonna let you sit down for a second, but you're gonna have to get back up. We're not done voting yet. Your, your intercession is your vote. And in this ecclesia, we vote standing up. I, I believe that the bloodletting in America through abortion is what's feeding the demonic frenzy that we see. And it's seeping into every aspect of who we are as a people. It's destroying us from inside out. This, this lady is a, what would you call yourself? She's a, she's a spokesperson. She's a warrior. She has, she has presented how many times before Congress? On, She's, she's presented before National Congress and gone and given her testimony. And she, she has been 
key in stopping what has been happening in this area. So I believe that tonight. I believe tonight we're going we're gonna to push against the spirit of abortion and that bloodthirsty demand for the blood of our children. And we're, we're going to break the spirit off of our country in Jesus' name. So I'm going to ask Luana to, to pray over this and pray into this. And we're, and we're just going to push into this. And then if uh, anybody else has following up her, then we'll push it. So let's begin to pray. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Lord, first of all, we thank you that you broke the spirit of death yes. when our Supreme Court said no. Because, Lord, they came into agreement with you, our Supreme Court and our Supreme Beam. And so, Lord, we declare right now that according to your court, that abortion and the spirit of death is broken off of our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we declare that the blood of Jesus Christ flows throughout our land. And no more is this a decision for states. Because Lord, we are one nation, indivisible. We are under God and Lord, we are one. And so as one, we come into agreement with that court decision and declare in every single state that abortion is illegal and it is no more in Jesus name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I, as a woman who has suffered from abortion, I repent. And Lord, I ask that you would forgive myself and all other women who made that decision and who came into agreement with that spirit of death. Lord, I destroy it. In Jesus' name, it is under my foot. And Lord, we ask that you forgive each one of us, and you will because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, I ask for a spirit of forgiveness to go out throughout the land, that every woman would rise up and cry out and ask for forgiveness, and that, Lord, you would prove and show it as your forgiveness will cover the land, your tears will cover our land, Lord God, and wash us white as snow. So, Lord, I come into agreement with the word of Isaiah 28 that says that that covenant of death is broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ no more and I declare in the state of Iowa that the heartbeat bill is passed according to the Supreme Court in Jesus name and I declare that the fetal development bill is passed through the Senate in Jesus name because we declare life 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 and life abundantly in Jesus name I want to hear the voice. We're, they're they're going to find the video for us. We're going to show in just a minute of, of Lou and, and G, Jen, G, Jenny. Jenny Donnelly. Jenny. Oh, yeah. We're going to play that video here in a minute of the, the Million Woman March happening. I'm going to try to get it before Dutch comes up. I want to hear the mama bears in this house. We, men, just support your wives right now. Lay hands on them. Stand beside them. I want to hear the voice of the mamas rise up in this house against the spirit of abortion. Go ahead, ladies. Release. 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 Come on, mamas, protect your cubs. Come on, mamas, protect your cubs. Shila Rosia Rabasata. Ye Katata Sata. Ro Sila Rasia Rababakata. Shila Rosia Rababakai. Now, women, I want you just to raise your hand. And every man, I want you to find a woman to lay hands on. And I want to hear the voice of the fathers. Come on. Be released in this place. Come on. Just in a pray in the spirit over our mothers. 
Come on, guys, I can't hear you. Take it up another level. Come on, take it up another level. Let's hear a masculine voice. Shore pasia toto. Shilabrasa. We release. We release the mothering spirit. We release the mothering spirit. We release the protective spirit of mothers. Shore siarabaka. Come on, we're doing the work of the ecclesia. Shila Rosia Rabaka. Sorry, Basia Kata. Norisila Rondoko. I'm going to ask Gabe to pray. His wife, Laura Allred, is working closely with Lou Engle and with Jenny. Am I, am I saying that right? It's Jenny Donnelly. And she's working closely with her. I'm going to ask him to pray. I, I feel like we need to. Not only call in all the finances for that, and we're, if, if, as soon as that video is ready, let me know. But I want to—I think we need to pray protection over that team. Absolutely. Go ahead, lead us in that. Come on, cast your vote, Ecclesia. Father, we thank you that all of heaven is leaning into this request. We're not entreating you to do something that's not already in your heart yes, 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 yes. we are just putting voice yes. to the dirt that you formed yes. and we're making it align with your heart so father over Lou Engel over Jenny Donnelly yes, over yes. the whole team my wife yes yes father we say that nothing that hell throws at them will inhibit them On the contrary, their voices will only get louder and they'll pick up steam. And this movement of just a few women that it started with and a dream from one of your favorite men on the planet, Lou Engel, is turning into a juggernaut that cannot be stopped. And there is no rock or hard place that can stop this move of God in Jesus' name. And the ecclesia said, yeah. can, can we lead you in one more area? As many of you know, of, as of today, Israel's under attack. I contacted our local Alan Ross, who's the director of the Quad Cities uh, Jewish Federation. Heard from a couple of guys that I know in, that are in Israel right now. They're, they're, they're in bomb shelters. Any latest update? Lead us in that. We're going to stand with Israel right now. We have a Jewish friend there that leads a lot of our tours that we do over there. And he had just put out a, a live post of their defense system destroying these missiles in the air. And he said, we, he's so appreciative of the prayers of the church and, and around the world. But he called America by name. And he said, uh, we have a four-tier defense system and we have a very big God and uh, there is a large group of, of of Israelis there that are calling on the name of the Lord and when Scott was speaking about this I just felt like that this was going to be used as a sickle to bring harvest in to the kingdom of God and uh, in Israel among the Jews so Lord tonight we release your goodness yes we release your yes. goodness and we declare Israel is going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, that your enemies are being made your footstool over in that region. And all of those that come against Israel, God, are going to see your wrath. Father, I thank you tonight that a harvest is coming in, that you're using the things that the enemy meant for evil and you're turning them for good. So we're asking tonight, God, that you begin to bring a harvest in among the Jews. You begin to bring a harvest in among the Muslim. You begin to bring a harvest in among all 
that call Israel their home. Let this be a countermeasure and a counterattack against the kingdom of darkness. We bless Israel tonight. And we thank you that Michael, the archangel, the prince of Israel, is being used tonight, God, to begin to pull down and defeat in the realm of the spirit tonight those strongholds that are feeding the hate, that is feeding this war against Israel. We thank you tonight, God, that this is being taken care of in the seen and the unseen realm. We bless Israel. And we decree tonight that you will know God. You will return to your God. You will return to that which you were created to serve. There will be the wind of the Spirit blowing over you to woo you in. You will see the salvation of the Lord even in this season. Lord, we thank you that you said over Israel that no weapon formed against her will prosper and every tongue that rises against her, God, to judge her, will be condemned. We're asking for that tonight, God, that you would arise and let your enemies be scattered tonight. Take them out. Take out the enemies. Take out the enemies. We pray tonight for a supernatural covering of your church that is in Iran, in Iraq, throughout the Middle East. We know, Father, they're not part of this. They hate it. And we ask tonight that you would cover them and you would protect them, bring them under your shadow pull them under your wing, Lord God, as countermeasures will be released. Protect your church. Bring in the harvest and let your glory be seen in the earth through what darkness has meant for evil in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And the ecclesia filled the house with the shout of the Lord. In 1997, an extraordinary event took place. A million and a quarter men, promise keepers, gathered to the mall in Washington, D.C. to pray for this nation. That on September 2nd, the year 2000, 450,000 young people primarily gathered to fast and pray for 12 hours. Out of promise keepers, came this movement called The Call, and for 24 years, there have been gatherings in stadiums and arenas across the nation and in the nations of the earth that I believe has been mounting up a prayer storm that maybe now we will begin to see the answer to those cries. And then 2017, I had a dream, and in that dream, as far and wide as I could see, women were coming everywhere to hear the book of Esther be taught. I'm the only man in that crowd with my assistant. He gives me an old Bible. It's the call of Mordecai to mobilize what I'm looking at. The movement was filled with a sense of revival. And in the dream, a woman stands up and she says these two words in the book of Esther actually mean Nazgul. I exploded out of the dream instantly knowing what it meant because I watched the third part of the Lord of the Rings where the Nazgul witch king is destroying the armies of men and he says, no man can kill me. But the king's daughter takes off her helmet, lets her hair down and says, ah, oh, that's no man. And she pierces the Nazgul witch king. I wake up and I know the Lord is saying, there is coming a righteous women's movement that is going to gain authority in America over principalities and powers, ideologies that are seeking to destroy the children of this nation. Then I begin to hear of this Her Voice movement, the woman named Jenny Darnley, and she was hearing about what I was calling for. And we joined together in 2022. We began dreaming about a million women on the mall in D.C. The movement was initiated. 
And now we have come to 2024, and we're calling a million women to the mall in D.C. to finish what was started. Esther was raised up at a time that if there wasn't a ship, they would lose the whole nation. We're calling every man of Mordecai, every woman in Esther, come to the mall on the Day of Atonement and dare to believe that God will shift history, save the nation, as we pray, fast, and stand on behalf of the children, your families, and your nation. So on this Day of Atonement, where the blood of Jesus is applied to the doorposts of our national guilt, you come to the defining moment just like Esther was brought to a defining moment. Will you be there? And you'll say to your children and your grandchildren, we were there when God gathered the Esthers and saved a nation. Don't miss this defining moment for such a time as this. You've been brought into the kingdom. If you stand up, you'll be a little bit closer to heaven. At least for some of you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. in this place I worship you I worship you you are we make a miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. you prophesy this over your families.
Nothing but blue skies do I see. Thank you for clear vision, God. Clouds of disappointment be dispersed in Jesus' name. Don't spend your time thinking about what he hasn't done yet. Praise him for what he's done. He's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer in him. Just celebrate him. Yeah, just celebrate him. You're so faithful, God. Amen. Wow, what a night. If you would, would you stay standing? I know some of you are sitting. Just real quick, we're going to go into this. What's amazing is in Matthew 18, 20, it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am, or I am in the midst. What a powerful night. And the Lord's been speaking to us back home about the power of all. And what we got to witness is the ecclesia coming together from the very first note and coming together in the power of one. And because of that, you guys, the ecclesia coming together, set an atmosphere for where we're at tonight. Yeah. Literally, for where we're at and what God's done and what God is going to do is because you guys decided to come in together and corporately gather, not in unity, but in oneness. And there's a power in that. There's a power in that to the point that the ecclesia can come in and can shift an atmosphere or it can set an atmosphere for the presence of God and the glory of God to come and move and, do, and to do what? To do the supernatural things. Man, it's, it's so, so big. And what I love about what Scott's doing, even in this conference, is he's not separating worship and offering or worship and giving but it, this investment is what I'm going to call it tonight. This investment is just a continuous act of worship. Because for so many times in the church, we've worshiped and then we've took an offering and we've segregated the two and they're absolutely not. You can't segregate them. Because in my opinion, for me personally, and I believe the word of God, investing or offering is a great vehicle to worship. And so I don't want to stop tonight. I don't want to stop with the power of all, but I want to continue it in this moment that together, what can we do as the ecclesia in the power of all in your investment tonight? Man, it's big. Like in the book of Acts, it goes on. I'm, I'm going to be quick. But it says in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly, but listen, the suddenly, the suddenly wouldn't have happened if the oneness wouldn't have came first. And there could be a suddenly in this place because the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the day of Pentecost, God found himself back in flesh and blood, rescued his image back in flesh and blood because oneness came in a group of people. And I'm, oh man, I want to kick something. Because I'm telling you tonight, and we're going to do this real quick. Greg said something today, and it just sparked something. In, in Romans chapter 8, it says, it really identifies who are the mature, mature sons of God. It says, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the mature sons of God. And for some reason, I don't know why we have gotten so far away in the ecclesia from being led by the Spirit. So tonight, we're going to, in the power of one... We're going to be led by the Spirit tonight. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is some of you may be going through a season where you're struggling. 
Don't let that stop you because Isaac sowed seed in famine and, and, and he got back a hundredfold. But what I mean by that is some of you in here may be going through a season where you're struggling, but some of y'all, even myself, are going through a season where God is prospering me like crazy. And so in the power of all, it can all be made up supernaturally if everybody in this place will just take a moment and say, Holy Spirit, I trust you. I, I, I trust you if you tell me to give 100. I trust you if you tell me to give 2,000. I trust you if you tell me to give 5,000. I trust you tonight if you tell me to give five. And so if you, is it okay if we just go into a song just real quick? I promise I'm almost done. But I just felt this on my heart. And so what we're gonna do, just real quick, 30 seconds, I want you to take time and close your eyes. And I want you to listen for the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, what would you have me to give? And the power of all through your obedience, I'm telling you, is gonna do something in this investment, not only for this conference, but for you individually in your life. Can we do that for just a minute? Can, can you actually play, something hit me this morning when you started playing Heart of Worship. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. So we take this moment, just, just right here, just, I will pray over us. Lord, we're coming back to a heart of worship, Lord, in our giving. We're not separating it, Lord, and just calling it a song, but it's an act of giving tonight. Holy Spirit, I, I would ask that you would enable spiritual ears, even right now, to unlock and to be able to hear you. Father, we bless this investment, God, in this oneness, in the power of all in this place. As Lord, your word said you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that is within us. So just at this moment right here, just close your eyes and ask, Holy Spirit, what would you have me give tonight? Thank you, Lord. Just be obedient tonight. Thank you, Lord. What I want you to do is don't give yet. Even if you're giving online, I want you to wait for just a minute. Y'all good? Everybody got it? Yeah? I want everyone to just raise your hand in this place. The power of all, Lord, we release it in this investment. I thank you for oneness in your ecclesia, God. So, Father, we just, it's an honor for us to release this, Lord. We bless it in the name of Jesus. On the count of three, we all come and give in oneness. One, two, three. Come and give, invest in this.
search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all Wow. Come on, let's just, can you just lift your hands and just say, it is all about you, Father. It is all about you. There is nothing that we bring to the table, but we just honor and give you glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, it's, it's my great honor that I get to introduce the, the speaker for tonight, and I was, I've been sitting there thinking, how do you introduce a guy that you've walked with since 1977? That's walked you and stood by you through thick and thin, bad times and good times. How do you introduce a guy that brought revelation knowledge to a nation that changed the way that we prayed? And then how do you introduce a guy that has become an apostle to a nation to see God restored in America. The only thing you can say is, please stand to your feet and welcome my friend, Dutch Sheets. God, I love you. I love you too, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, man, I need to take him on the road with me and let him in. <laughs> Introduce me. <laughs> Thanks, Kitty. Thank you, Scott, for the opportunity to be here. And thank all of you for being here. I was sitting here and I, I if I didn't look engaged tonight, don't worry about that, because I was. I'm just trying to chill a little bit and pace myself. But um, I found myself thinking that this type of service meeting is the way we should be doing things on a regular basis. We shouldn't be coming and just having a service and going through a, a schedule, we should, we should come with the question in our hearts, what does he want to do tonight? And we'll, we'll worship and we'll connect and we'll hear and we'll move into some things on his heart and we'll decree and we'll pray about those things and we'll go back into that time with him and, and before the night's over we'll hear a little from his word, what he's saying and We'll let him prophesy when he wants to prophesy, and we'll commission people when he wants to commission people. And you know, it's, it's like when we gather, this is the way it should be. An interaction, a, a union, a, a doing business with him and for him. And I think it's really awesome that um, there's freedom and liberty here to do just that. And I heard it's been, you know, okay. Tim was okay and Greg was okay. 
You know, I just. <laughs> I'm really stirred tonight because it, it, actually my, my mind, from my heart, my mind is going in a lot of directions. Uh, I feel like God is about to connect some dots uh, in America. I feel like things we've been plowing for, asking for, fasting, praying for, moving toward are coming to a head. Some of it's not going to be pleasant. If you follow me at all, you know I believe the shaking, we're, we're in it, but it's not over. I think it's going to get still worse before it gets better. But the shaking is not coming to destroy us. The shaking is coming to restore us. It is a redeeming, it's a redemptive shaking. It's not, it's a God, those he loves, he disciplines. And since he found a people that would ask him to restore this nation, turn it, then, and of course that was his heart, now he's saying, okay, you asked and I'm going to do it, and whatever it takes, that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, and this is not my message, by the way, but, but you know, since America so, went so far from the Lord, and really, in a sense, gave herself so fully to demonic control, then it's, it's meant that the turning process would take longer and would be a little more intense. And the Lord, I feel, is, is saying, you know, has it, in essence, whatever his attitude is, whatever, whatever it takes, and he knows what that is, but whatever it is, I'm going to do that. You ask me to, I'm going to do it. And if that means, uh, and in, if that means some, some difficult shaking, I'm, I'm going to do that. God has given America a lot of opportunities to repent and, and, and turn, and that hasn't happened, although many in the church have. So we have positioned ourselves with him to be what he needs to turn the rest of the nation. That's what a remnant does in the Lord. They become a people set, a, set apart to his purpose and what he wants. And they'll pay whatever price they need to pay to do it. One of the phrases in the Old Testament for the remnant that went back to Israel, Jerusalem to work is, whoever's heart stirs them, let them go. So God, for, for God to use a remnant to turn a nation, he has to first start with those whose hearts have been stirred to do that. And it's not that if you're part of the praying remnant he's using, that's not an insinuation that we're better than others. It's not an arrogant statement. It just means we're saying yes, and he's going to use us to do it. And we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for him and everyone. And whatever the shaking is, how, how, however rough it gets, it's going to be worth it because we're moving toward a billion soul harvest. And he's going to get this harvest reaped. So the revival's coming, and, and I, I believe a true reformation is coming. And I'm thinking about this <clears throat> somewhat because uh, I, I went back in my mind when I was watching the video of Lou, because I've been on a journey with him for quite some time, probably since 2000, or even before. And... You know, when, when, you're, when you're in his shoes or some of the things I've done, others, you, you don't really, I don't think many of us realize or think about the fact when we're called to do something like he was at the call, some of the things that I've been a part of. I don't think, I don't think you, very many people think about the fact that I'm going to go do this 
but it's still going to be 20 plus years before we get to the finish line. It's like we're going to do the call and revival's going to break out the next morning, you know. Or the hundreds of prayer events that I've done, been a part of. Maybe thousands. You know, some of them are so powerful, you find yourself thinking, oh, okay, a breakthrough, you know. But it's not breakthrough, it's breakthroughs. That's right. It's incremental. It's peeling back the onion, so to speak. It's, 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 it's moving a people toward repentance and, and turning to the Lord. If God were just trying to turn a person, this wouldn't take that long, but when you're talking about turning millions, hundreds of millions of people, and when you're talking about connecting it to government and education and ideologies that have been allowed to be built and put into a generation, there's just a lot he has to do. <clears throat> so let me back up for a few minutes, and I don't know where this will go. We'll just go for a while and see where we land. But in 2007, when Lou came to me and said, uh, I feel like I'm to do another call. He'd already done uh, a few. I don't, I'm not sure how many. Maybe just one or two or three. I don't know. But he, he, he said, I feel God is telling me to do a call in Nashville. And I don't think that was necessarily the most significant part of it to him, for him, although he, he really felt led to do it there. But he said, God has told me to do it on 777. July 7th, 2007. So he just called it 777. And, and I remember when he was in a meeting with a room full of prophets, when he leaned over to me, we were, we were talking about this. And he hadn't made it public yet. He just said, I, I just feel, man, it's just seven, uh, something about this 777. <laughs> You're trying to listen to him going. He's in your ear, you know, you got to whisper it in a room full of people. You got to keep your ear there and you're going. <laughs> trying to hear him, you know. If you, if you get out of sync with him, he's up here and you're back here and you can't hear. So. <laughs> and I remember when this prophet started prophesying a few minutes later. There's a room full of prophets having just sort of an interactive meeting. It wasn't a service. Kind of a round table thing. And she starts prophesying about this gathering that God is calling Lou Engel. Now, she hadn't heard anything about the date. And she prophesies the date. I hear the number 777. Ah, Lou, I thought you would bang his head on the table. <laughs> ah, ah, I told you, man. Ah. <laughs> he told, I, was just, I was just with him in California. This guy was there. He, he told a story about going, waking up one night in the middle of the night. I think he, I don't know if he was fasting or something. Uh, he kind of fasts all the time. Uh, but he was hungry, so he went to the 7 Eleven. And he's like three in the morning, four in the morning. He's got a donut and a cup of coffee or something. Sitting in his car. <laughs> about five minutes later, a crew, police cruiser shows up. The slides go up. Come on and bang on his window. Roll away. Are you okay, sir? We have a call that there's a person in the parking lot here having a seizure. <laughs> He's, oh, I'm okay. I'm just praying. Ah, yeah, this is Lou Engel. But here, here's the interesting thing about this now. Well, there are a lot of interesting parts of it, but a, a couple of months before this, time when he told me that and the prophecy came, and, and he told the whole room what he was planning after the lady stopped prophesying. A couple of months before, I had moved into this intense season of personal warfare, spiritual warfare. 
And that was, well, spiritual warfare was nothing new to me at that point in time. I'd taught on it, written about it, understood as well as you can, and where I was at, my, at that point in my life. I'm just saying, I was not a novice with spiritual warfare at that point. I'd had a lot of teaching, a lot of training, I had understanding, but this was different. And I found myself in this time, and after, you know, for a day or two, you just think, maybe, and, you know, sometimes it, it, the enemy can be so subtle, you just kind of think you're in a funk, you know. As you, it, you don't recognize that this is oppression or spiritual. You're just thinking, man, I'm just out of it. I'm just in a funk, you know. And can't think, tired. Maybe I need a nap, you know. Or am I coming down with something? Yeah. So after a couple of days, it just kind of dawns on me. It's like revelation. You, and then you feel silly. It's like, duh. Warfare? And I realize this is spiritual warfare. So I know what to do with that. I take authority over it, bind, loose, you know. Paga! <laughs> well done, my son. And it wouldn't stop. And it was just like, this stuff wasn't coming from in my mind, my soul, my spirit. It wasn't controlling me. It wasn't taking over. I hadn't yielded to it. But it was like I was walking around in this cocoon, this bubble of oppression and warfare, and though I wouldn't let it in, it was around me all the time. And I was just always having to resist this. And I would, I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and just have to go downstairs and pray for an hour or two to just get peace. Well, finally, after a, after a week or two of this, I realized this is, this, is, this is something significant. So I called my friend Chuck Pierce. And... Chuck's been one of the crosses I've had to bear for <laughs> many years now. <laughs> but I called Chuck and I said, hey man, I'm really going through this. And I described to him and I said, you, I need a word from the Lord. And you're a prophet, so we'll see if you have a word for me. I mean, you can't just flip the switch and Get, get it when you want it always, but I thought at least I'll get encouragement if he doesn't have a word for me, you know, he'll pray with me and give me some good counsel, whatever. So I said, you know, I just need a word from the Lord. I need to know what's going on, Chuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, yeah, I know. Spirit of Baal. This is the spirit of Baal. And I'm thinking, Baal? That's like back in yeah, that's, it's Elijah. That's, that's wait. I thought that spirit was dealt with a long time ago. He said, yeah, it's Baal. He's a strong man over America. And God has allowed this encounter. He wants to teach you about this spirit, how it rules, and what it's doing in America, so you can teach the rest of us how to deal with this spirit. He said, so, he'll show you. Okay, bless, bless you, bye. I said, oh, wait, bye, bye. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> well, I know it was a word from the Lord, so I began studying the Bible about Baal. Not didn't get a bunch of books and see what other people had to say. I just dove into the scriptures. And God began to show me uh, the different ways that spirit operates and uh, different pictures in scripture that I really didn't know and understand. He gave me significant teachings about it and I, and I began to teach it in our church and then I started teaching it on the road and, and was just gleaning understanding about this spirit. One of the things I discovered is that the spirit of Baal tries to usurp 
the covenant that a people has with God and get them to enter into a covenant with him. He calls himself, one of his names, Baal gave himself a lot of names. Baal was worshipped by most of the Canaanite people. And they gave him numerous names associated with what they thought he did for them. But one of the names that this spirit orchestrated that he would have was the Lord of Covenant. Baal means Lord or, or Master. So Baal Bareth meant the Lord or the God or the Master of Covenant. And he would call, he literally called himself their husband. You're married to me. So he would try to get Israel to break their covenant with the Lord and through their actions, if not their worship, but it always ended up being Baal worship also in Israel, but get them to walk away from, violate, break their covenant, their marriage to God, their covenant with him, and align covenantally with Baal. And he became their husband. So now, I discovered that also that, I didn't intend to go into all this tonight, but I'm on a trail here and I'm going to stay on it for a little bit. Not because I think it's for us individually. I think it's another step about to be taken for the nation. So, in Hebrew, the word seven, now we're back to seven, seven, seven. The word seven is also the word oath, O-A-T-H, oath. Shiva, or Shiva. B, pronounced like a V, vice versa in Hebrew. So Beersheba, Beersheba, for example, is the well of oaths or the well of sevens or the well of covenant. Genesis 21, Genesis 26. The reason seven became the word for oath is, be, is that in a covenant ceremony, when they would take the oath of covenant, they would repeat it seven times. Because seven, in, in, as a number, means completion or wholeness. So in a covenantal oath, you were saying, I give myself to this covenant completely, wholly, fully. So you would repeat it seven times, and so an oath of covenant was actually called in that day, back in Kings, back in Genesis, it was actually called sevening yourself. You sevened yourself because you took the seven, the oath, seven times. So I found this fascinating, and then I started studying sevens. And often, often, when Israel had drifted into Baal worship and was now, had broken covenant with Yahweh and was married to, covenant, covenantally connected to Baal, and God was going about to break that off them, their repentance, judgment, whatever, then they're going to turn back to God, there would be sevens involved. Seven years of judgment. Seventy years of judgment. Find a seven-year-old bull, Gideon, and sacrifice it before you tear down the altar of Baal. Numerous scriptures. So what was God saying? He was, he was showing, you need to divorce Baal, break those sevens, and seven yourself to me. Recovenant with me. Remarry me, as it were. Does that make sense? Yeah. Tracking with me so far? So before Lou gets this date and this prophecy, I've been in a two-month process studying this Baal thing. I've been in warfare. 
And God's been showing me all of this, and I realized this number seven, <coughs> this covenantal number, is really important, and it's all about aligning with God, and often it was about align, aligning or breaking an alignment with Baal. And I knew all this was for the nation this, that I was going through and studying. And I didn't know really what God was going to do with it until Lou leaned over to me and said, I feel like I'm supposed to do this thing on 777. And I said, <coughs> I can't keep talking like Lou. It's messing with my throat. It's giving me a tickle. <coughs> it's God saying, quit making fun of Lou. I'm not making fun of Lou, okay? I'm just having fun. I do this to Lou. <laughs> hey, Lou, how's it going? He's like, good. <laughs> We're pretty tight. But he leans over the sisters to me. He says, I don't know why. I said, I know why. He says, why? And I share this revelation. God is saying, we've come to a point where he's going to enable us as a nation to divorce Baal break this covenant of death with Baal and remarry the Lord, re-covenant ourselves to him. And that's why he's, that's why he's telling you to do this on 777. Wow. wow, he just went all through him and he just knew this is right. So it became the theme of the call in Nashville on 777. It was really so powerfully used by the Lord and so resonated in people. There were actually several people that got married on that day around the country and some there in the stadium were married. So after this, then we went, the, the movement sort of uh, I call it a movement, the, the revelation, the, the prayer against this, the, this thing of confessing the sin and the alignment with Baal and divorcing or, or cutting off, breaking that covenant, divorcing Baal, remarrying the Lord, come reestablishing covenant with him for the nation. I'm not talking about for, for an individual. Intercessorily doing it for the nation. That kind of went to the state level. And all around the nation, every state, Teams of people went all over their state having prayer gatherings, worship times, repentance, not just in services like this, but places where um, heinous, evil sins, things took place in America that needed to be repented over. You know, maybe a place where a law was passed regarding abortion or going to abortion clinics or just, just as, as, as the Lord led them, this happened. And, and so this was powerful and went to, went, took place throughout all the states. And I've been watching the Lord then the last two, three years amp it up again because even though a remnant of believers have been doing this the nation as a whole has not been willing and ready to do it. And the blood sacrifice sacrifices taking place on a regular basis to the spirit of Baal because that was one of Baal's things was human sacrifice. Molech is a spirit under Baal. So that's one of the things that fed this spirit and gave him the power, the right to control a nation. So while we're doing this, of course, that, that didn't stop that continued. And yet, just a couple of years ago, Roe v. Wade was overturned. Showing many of us we are making progress. 
Because even though that did not technically end abortion in America, it ended the national decree making it law so that God could then begin to deal with it on a state and individual level, not as a sin of an entire nation. So obviously, you, you, if, you have, if you pay attention at all, you know that battle hasn't stopped. But that was an incredibly huge breakthrough in the spirit after 50 years of it being the law of the land that was broken off of us. <laughs> so, I'm not surprised that Lou is, I mean, he's never stopped doing these things, but he, he shifted strategy somewhat. But I'm not at all surprised now that he is being led with this uh, other, I don't know the other girl, I don't think. What's her name? Je Jenny? We just call her Jenny, is that right? Jenny? I, I'm not surprised that God is saying, now we go to another level. This event coming up in October, I don't have words to tell you how significant I believe it is. It is not just another prayer meeting on the mall. In some ways, I don't know whether to say this or not, but I'm just going to say I think and it can be judged now and in the, in, in over the next few days or weeks, I'll be pondering, I, I can assure you. I think it's one of the nails in the coffin of the spirit of Baal, his rule over our nation, this gathering on the 12th. So, <clears throat> One of the places I was going to go, and I'm still going to go there in this message tonight, but I'm doing it in a completely different way, was I was going to mention Esther. I didn't know they were going to do the video, but I had already intended to mention uh, the book of Esther and her role and what took place there. It's very significant that the empire, the king, the, 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 that Esther was connected to was the leader of the Persian Empire, which is Iran, which is all fired up, no pun intended. All this stuff is very connected in the spirit. Even this, you know, the whole thing with Gaza, this spirit a year or two ago began to rise up again in an effort to maintain its hold there, but also here. And it's this prince of Persia connected to Baal. They all work together. So the Lord uses this Hebrew girl, we all know the story, and her uncle Mordecai, who's her, her mentor, her, her advisor, helps her to break the attempt of Haman to destroy the Jews. We just, it's just the same spirit right now. Haman was an Amalekite, the son of Esau, an Amalekite, and hated the Jews. And this spirit that Saul was supposed to take out and didn't, but this spirit has always warred against Israel. It's funny when this, when they attacked Gaza, Netanyahu was actually referring to 
Iran and what was taking place as the, as the Amalekites, the Amalekite spirit. Isn't that interesting? That the, the leader of the nation was, was referring to it as an Amalekite spirit trying to take over the nation. Well, it is. It's the prince of Persia. Same thing was working in Esther, in the book of Esther, uh, through Haman to try to destroy the Jews because that spirit wants to destroy the Jews. It hates anything that would glorify the Lord, that would honor covenant with him. And even though Israel is not honoring in the way they need to, the covenant they have with the Lord. Some of them do, but most of them are not. But we know God's going to deal with that. But even us, we, they're the great Satan, we're the little Satan, because they hate the relationship that we have with God. So that spirit is always trying to stop what God's doing, because it hates him. That's not a revelation, is it? I mean, that's, be, that's we all know that. But one of the things I, I saw recently is I, I was studying and preparing for an Easter message I did for Tim. I didn't realize that Haman was hung on the 17th day of Nisan, the month of Nisan. Well, that's a significant date in Israel. It's, for, it's the first fruits, uh, first, first day of the... Feast of First Fruits, following Passover. Passover really basically is the cross. Jesus was the Passover lamb. You get to First Fruits, it's the first day of the week begins first uh, Feast of First Fruits, which is the resurrection. That's why it's called the First Fruits of uh, those of us who, who have been raised spiritually. So as I was studying this for this message, I realized I'd never seen this, put to, but I didn't know some of this. I don't know how I missed it for 70 years. <laughs> but there are several significant events that took place in Israel's history on that date. And not just Israel's history, but the history of the planet. And the, the connection for us is this Esther thing, okay? Yeah. And this Baal thing, and this Prince of Persia thing, and this covenant with the Lord thing, and what he's doing in the earth. But the first of these significant events is the flood. Noah's ark came to rest on Mount Ararat on the 17th of Nisan. Now you, sure, you, you're not a coincidence people here, are you? Not? I mean, so. so as a picture of God redeeming a fallen race, when he has to destroy this wicked earth, the people in Genesis 6, just, we're talking about way back. He's, he says, I'm going to, I'm going to use this to paint a picture, and I'm going, to, I'm, going to have, I'm going to, he tells the angels, make sure there are eight of them on the ark. Well, there's Noah and his wife, and he's got three sons. Well, get them married. Why eight? Because it's new beginnings. And I'm going to picture something with this event. I'm going to make sure that when the death takes place, the resurrection happens on 17 Nisan, and I want to make sure eight people New beginnings come because it's going to picture the new start I'm giving the human race at the cross one day. That ought to make you just want to turn somersaults. Well, they're not married. Well, get them married. He's telling the angels, you know, get them married. Well, what if, what if we could just get them married? Gabriel, be quiet. Get him married. <laughs> and, and God is so great, you know, that I've, I've, I've been feeding on Jeremiah 32, 27. I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's what he said. Is there anything too hard for me? You know the word thing there? Is there anything? You know what that, that's really a bar. That's really the word for a word. The word of the Lord is dabar. 
Is there anything I say that I can't do? Is there any promise? Dabar. David, is there not a cause? That's the bar. You could translate that. Is there not a, is there not a promise? Is there not a word? That God, that anybody, don't we have a word to deal with this giant? Who's heard from God about this giant? And I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. There's no word that I give too hard for me. Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my the bar be that goes out of my mouth, it won't return to my voice. If I said it, I can do it. Yeah. Jeremiah 1, how's this going to happen, God? I'm just a young prophet. I don't know what this, you tell me I'm going to tear down, pluck up nations and overthrow them and then build and plant. I'm just a young bird, budding prophet. I don't know anything. How are you going to do this? Well, I'm going to watch over my debar yeah. to perform and accomplish it. Because I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. There's no bar too hard for me. That would have been a good time to make a second lap around the building or something. I don't know. But he's, this, is, this is what fascinated me as I meditated on this. Is like He's so incredibly... I did a post about this. Some of you may have read the post. The rest of you are grossly uninformed. <laughs> but but you know, he's going to have all this rain. I mean, we're talking the earth flooded. And he's telling the angels, you know, they, 40 days of rain, and then it's all flooded. And, Boat's going to float for 150 days. Why 150 days? Because I'm going to have to get them to 17 Nassan. And I'm going to cause a wind to come. And we, we, you know, we, God talking to the angels, we are going to make sure that all this water, that everything comes together to get just enough of it Dried up, evaporated to the boat, touch ground on 17 Nassau. Wow. Of course, the angels, they don't know why he's doing this. Because he can't tell, he can't tell them how he, the mystery of how he's going to redeem the human race. The Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they kept the cross and the events surrounding it a hidden, a secret. Only that, that the angels didn't even know how he's going to do this. Yeah. He can't tell them. They're thinking, well, come on. Why that day? We, how are we going to make sure the last drop flows into this stream over here and the boat touches down on that day? Ah. I wrote in my post, I guess the angels get used to this stuff. <laughs> I don't know, he said it, he'll do it. Somehow just make the wind blow, man. He'll do the rest. <laughs> and sure enough, on the very day that centuries later Jesus is going to step out of the tomb and the new creation can come forth. Yeah. The ark touches down and the eight picture resurrection. But then the, the, the next one I'm trying to remember which one comes next. When Joshua was leading Israel across the Jordan River. Well, let's back up, do the one before, and then we'll come to that one. Moses leading Israel in the Exodus. They come to the Red Sea. God tells Moses to go to a certain point. Then when they get to a certain point, they're, 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 they're leaving Egypt. They want to get as far away as they can. Then he says to them in chapter 14 of Exodus, turn around. Turn around and go back. And he told, them, told Moses exactly where to go. 
And it happened to be a place that was, you okay? I mean, are we okay? Is it time wise? I just go for a few more minutes, but I, I, what time? It's only 9.13. You, you, I don't know, some of you are getting old and you can't handle it, but most of you are okay. I mean, it's 10.13 to me. If I can do it, you can do it. But, you know, when he, when, he ju- when he delivered Israel, he's not only delivering them, he's judging, exposing the gods of Egypt, Baal. He's exposing Baal. Because they worshiped Baal. And they had all these things that he did for them, and Baal this and Baal that. So all these plagues are God showing that he's stronger and greater. He's God. That are just idols. He wants the Egyptian people to know. He wants Israel to know. He also wants the Egyptian people to know he's God. They were just worshiping idols. But so he, had done, he, he judged all of them except for one named Baal Zephon, which was the God, Baal, God or Lord of the sea. The winds and the seas, and powerful. He was the most powerful of the Baal gods that Egypt worshipped. So God says, turn around and come back to this place, which happened to be right there at the Red Sea. And you've got a mountain on one side and the Red Sea on the other. And then you've got the, the Pharaoh army coming the other. Now, he led them right into a trap. And if you go read Exodus 14, the place they became trapped was right across a little stretch of the sea where on the other side was the idol high place they had built for Baal Zephon, the god of the sea. And he tells them twice, make sure you camp across, right across from Baal Zephon. <laughs> and then Pharaoh shows up and all of the Israelites, are, they're just going like, what have you done, Moses? You're, we're, we're trapped. You've led us into a trap. We were clipped there. And you admit, it does turn around. This, now we're trapped. And Pharaoh thought they were trapped. And his... his Thinking was, finally, one of my gods is greater than their god. And he's led them into a trap. Right in front of him, he's going to help us destroy them right in front of him. So God set this up. He literally set this up to make it look like Israel was in big trouble so he could show himself strong and judge Zephon, Baal Zephon. So he brought him there, and you know the rest of the story. He didn't just take him around the Red Sea. Since he had a company watching Pharaoh and the chariots and Baal Zephon, he decided just to take him through the sea. And expose Zephon. But the point is, that happened when the sea came back in on this Baal spirit. That happened on Nisan 17. A picture of Jesus overcoming death and Baal, all Satan's demons, and bringing forth the resurrection. Get them back. Turn around and come back here. I need to paint a picture of the resurrection. So then when Joshua leads them across in the promised land, a few decades later, and they cross at Passover, they come up on the other side, eat the fruit of the land. The very next day after they eat the fruit of Canaan, the manna dries up on 17 Nisan. Why? Because the man is a picture of Jesus. Our bread of life comes down from heaven. So he's done the work now. He's back in heaven. So the manna, the picture changes. Manna dries up. They start eating the fruit of the land on the day of resurrection. And then, of course, a few years later, He decides to hang Haman 
on that day. How does he orchestrate all this? I mean, no, you know he can get him hung, but he's got to put into the heart of all these people to do these things and have the gallows done. Make sure he build, finishes his own gallows in time to hang himself on resurrection day. And the angels are going, huh, what's resurrection day? <laughs> I said all that to say it's connected to Esther. It's connected to Baal, all of this. One of Satan's primary leaders. And it is a picture for us that God can do exactly what he says he can do. He can navigate through centuries, millennia, and land it on the day he wants to do it. I'll just let that sink in. So what he's been saying to me is, if I say America shall be saved, you need to know I can save America. I can break this demonic hold of Baal, Zephon. At the time, I'd tell you about the dream Greg had with Baal, Zephon in it. He gets it right once in a while. <laughs> but God wants us to know, I can do this. I can land that ark exactly where I want it, the day I want it. And if I have to dry up earth-wide flood just at the right place on that day to do it, I can land that ark right there. I can get a whole nation across a Jordan River. I can navigate through the previous generation's rebellion. Waiting for all of them to die. I can navigate through Abraham and Sarah's barrenness. I can navigate through broken covenants and sin and centuries of slavery in Egypt. I can navigate through Pharaoh and Baal. I can do all of this. It's not a problem for me. What I need is for a people to work with me and believe and obey because I can do all of that and cause them to cross and the manna stop on resurrection day. That's how big I am, because I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. No word is too hard for me. So what word has he given you that Satan tells you? It's not going to happen, that prodigal. Your, your miracle, your marriage, maybe. For me, this nation. I mean, I have to get saved every day when I watch the news. Because <laughs> after I've cussed and cursed and thrown things at the TV and kicked and kicked the dog and spat on the floor, and just, then I have to go repent and say, Lord, I love these people. Many times, some, sometimes, you, you probably don't know that sometimes when I put in the post, America shall be saved, that's for me. <laughs> Not just you. Because I'm reminding myself that the Lord, the God of all flesh, can land this thing exactly where he says he's going to land it. <laughs> and I'm going to stop this right now, but I'm, I'm just going to say this to you, and then I'm going to lead in prayer, and you close it after after I, I'm just going to pray in a second and you can do whatever you want. But there's an Esther encounter with Haman coming in October of this year. It's another step. I don't know where it is on the list. 
But it's another step toward America divorcing Baal and returning to our covenant with him. It's going to be turbulent. We're not through the warfare. We might find ourselves standing at the Red Sea a time or two between now and this thing being finished and have to believe that God can do it. But we're going to get there because he's the Lord, the God of all flesh. There's no word too hard for him. You know, with the prayer we prayed tonight, that's one of the hardest prayers for me. Is uh, One of the hardest things for me to, to, to keep my faith where it needs to be is it, 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 this abortion thing. Because I see such, a, such hardened, depraved hearts in this nation. I mean, it's like, They've not gotten better. Many of them, they've gotten worse. They, they, it's not like they, some God has delivered. The, the others, it's not like they're closer to a loving life. They're, we, we, we have national leaders saying, deliver the baby and let it die on the table. I mean, just think about it. How depraved does a nation have to get for its leaders to say that's okay? And fight for it. But here's what I know. He who began a good work will complete it. And he's the Lord, the God of all flesh. And there's nothing, no word, too hard for him. And America will be saved. And this, he's coming to rescue a generation you're going to see, you, you've heard me say, you're going to see the greatest revival in history here and in other nations. And the Prince of Persia is not going to stop it. And the Prince of Baal is not going to stop it. And ungodly leaders, government leaders, they're not going to stop it. Educators aren't going to stop it. Lukewarm churches aren't going to stop it. God is going to do what he said he can do. He just needs a people to stay engaged, keep their faith engaged, keep doing what he says, and he's going to do what he said he could do. So, Lord, stand with me. Lord, we thank you for Resurrection Day. Thank you for doing that hanging on Nisan 17, Lord. We, we, we love that you did that. Resurrection Day. When death lost... And life won. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for getting him across that Jordan and eating the fruit of the land and then the manna disappears. Thank you for doing that on Resurrection Day. Yes. You planned it for millennia. From the foundation of the world. Yes. Thank you for landing that ark on that day. Thank you for exposing Baal Zephon in his corner of the sea, in front of his stronghold on 17 Nassau. So Lord, an Esther company is gonna gather in Washington this October. We're gonna exalt you and say, you're the Lord, the God of all flesh. Any word too hard for you? And you're going to say no, 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 no. So Lord, you, you begun, you've begun a good work and you're going to finish it. We're coming back to covenant with you. You're going to be our husband. You're going to be Israel's husband. That's going to happen too at some point. We're going to live at Beersheba, the 
well of covenant. We're going to drink from it daily. So we bind every work of Baal and that prince of Persia in the name of Jesus. We decree your words that the earth belongs to you and the fullness thereof. You own Iran. You own the Middle East. You own Syria, Jordan, uh, you know, United Emirates, the Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, Iraq. You own it all. You own every inch of it. Of course you own Israel, but you own it. You own America. You own all of it. The earth belongs to you. Jesus is king and Lord over all the nations. They've been promised to him. They're his. He's going to have people there in heaven, part of his family from every tribe and tongue. There won't be any missing. And America will be saved. A generation is going to be saved. Our children will be saved. Millions of prodigals are coming home. You're going to show yourself strong. You're going to work miracles. You're going to give them dreams and visions. You're going to let them see the dead raised and broken limbs healed and terminal people healed and resurrected. You're going to do so much because you're the Lord, the God of all flesh. No word is too hard for you. And you love them all. You love every one of them. We just want to announce right now again, we've announced it before. We want to announce it again. This nation belongs to the Lord. It is His nation. Our children belong to the Lord. It is, they belong to Him. The covenant of marriage is going to be honored. Identity crises are going to be healed. And then all the confusion is going to be broken off of a generation. You're going to save them. You're going to have trophies from these camps, Lord. They're going to worship you. And it's going to make Baal so mad he's going to throw up all over the place. In fact, there's a verse of scripture in Jeremiah where God says, I'm going to make Baal throw up all that he has stolen and consumed. Come on. <laughs> Amen. I'm done. Great extra stuff. Come on. Come on, let's thank Papa Dutch. I've asked Gabe, I've asked Gabe to just lead us in one song real quick, just to settle this in your heart with worship, to just seal this in your heart. He gets done, I'll come up, say a good night prayer over you. And if you can come tomorrow, 10 o'clock, it's gonna be amazing. Come on, Gabe. Well, in light of that fantastic teaching, wow, my brain hurts in all the right ways. We've heard what you can do, God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you'll do again, cause there's no prison wall you can't break through. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can't save, all oh, things are possible.